coming over and being here for this Bible study. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm going to ask Troy to pray and sin. Thank you, Troy. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this very moment that you have given us, Lord, to learn more of you. Thank you for traveling grace, allowing us to make it here, to get more of your word in us, so we'll be able to put more of your word out of us. We thank you, Father, for the teach role tonight. Give her what to say in this very hour, Heavenly Father. We thank you that every heart and every mind is open to receive your word in, apply it to our lives, live it, and share it with others. We love and praise you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 As you know, my Bible study is titled Make a Choice. And I was talking last week about how I, you know, was um, having a, uh, a discussion with myself because that's what it was. A discussion with myself whether or not I wanted to go to Gwen's birthday party. So I made the choice to go. And then, um, you know, I remember when I first started coming to church. Um, and I didn't know that I had to confess that Jesus Christ died and rose for my rose and died. died and rose. rose, rose, rose. Which one is it? You said it right. Rose died and rose on the third day for me. Because I, I'm gonna take it personal. It's for me. Right. 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 You know, I gotta take it personal. It's called because personal relationship. you know, uh, the reason why I take it personal is because you know, I never really knew or felt that kind of um well, I'm gonna start crying again. <laughs> I never felt that kind of want or or that hunger and that thirst. Yes, that hunger and thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. That hunger and that thirst that I needed because I felt something was missing in my life. Mm -hmm. And when I felt something was missing in my life, I made the choice to confess with my mouth and declare that he is one in my life. Mm -hmm. That he's first. Before I do anything, I have to talk to him. Mm -hmm. Because he's going to help guide me to where I need to go. Amen. Or what I need to do. Mm -hmm. Because if I depend on myself, even though he gives me free will, if I depend on myself, I might go the wrong way. And I probably will, because I've done it before. You know, I remember one time when I was, uh, you know, I was struggling. And it was just me and Angel. And we used to live on Phil. And one time I had asked one of the, one of the ladies, I said, where is there a food bank? Because, you know, I didn't have money to buy food. And at that time, I didn't even come to this church. And um, the lady had told me where it was. And then I said to uh, Angel, so this is what, what we're gonna do. I'm gonna clean the house first, okay? And then we'll go see about the food bank in a little while. But there was this lady that she used to work, you know, at the center. And she came up to me and she was looking for me, but she didn't know where I lived, but she knew I lived somewhere in Philip. She was knocking all over the doors and asking people, and she found me. That was the grace of God. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. That was just the grace of God. Amen. She said, don't go nowhere. I got something for you. Mm. She went. She did whatever she did, and then she came back, and she bought me some food. Girl, she went food shopping. Amen. Amen. Food shopping. And I wasn't even coming to church. I wasn't even coming to this church to understand how great he is. You know? And it took me to end up in the hospital to really make a choice in my life to de dedicate myself to him. Amen. 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 And when I made that choice, I haven't regretted it at all. Not Amen. at all. Amen. Not at all. Amen. Because, you know, 
one of the things that I understand is if he did it for the people in the past, mm -hmm. he could do it for me in the future. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. He's the same God then, now, and forevermore. Amen. 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 And when he when he came to me and was giving me this word. And I'm going to tell you, he gave me this word. This is for me. This word is for me. It goes to me, and then it passes on to whoever else needs it. But it's more for me. Mm -hmm. It's to understand that when I make my choice, he's never going to let me down. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a choice. Exactly. It's a choice where I need to believe and trust, mm -hmm. knowing that no matter what's happening in your life, no matter what goes on in your life, mm -hmm. he's there. Amen. Amen. You know, like that poem, you only see one footstep? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, That's what he's carrying you. Footprint. 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 Mm -hmm. That's what he's carrying you. And he's taking you to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. I, I love I, I just this study here has really opened my eyes. Amen. Cause when I was doing the study, right, last week when I was talking, you guys were were over here and they're going to do my work. They're going to make my confirmations right there, and that one over there, and that one over there. And I was like, but I'm still going to go through what I got to do. Mm -hmm. You know? So, oh my God. you know, I went to Psalms 81 and 10. All right. Okay. All right. And it's NLT, because that's what I have right here, NLT. Psalms 81 and 10. Yes, Psalms 81 and 10. NLT. Because my words here says rescue us. I wrote down like right Oh, I got a hand. Who, who got a hand? Deacon Brown. Go ahead, Deacon Brown. Psalms 81 and 10. You turn it on. You were saying that uh, you weren't even thinking about this church or coming to this side of the religion. God was already speaking to you. Mm -hmm. God uses other people to get your attention when you won't listen to what he's saying. It was your destination to move to this side of the religion. You know? mm -hmm. And if you hadn't listened to that strange lady or that didn't know you, where would you be today? And it's, it's okay to be emotional when you're talking about God. Mm -hmm. you know? Amen. Because there are tears of joy Amen. and not tears of depression. Amen. 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 So, as I said, Psalms 81 and 10. For it was I, the Lord, your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it with good things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, and, uh, <clears throat> Go ahead, Pastor. And, you know, in this passage, Egypt represents bondage. Yeah. And so, you know, it represents bondage or slavery to whatever it is that may be, you know, in your life that you are trying to get out of, out from under. And here the Lord is telling them Already that <laughs> what was him who rescued us from slavery. Yeah. Him who rescued us from bondage. That's why in uh, John uh, here it is, John 8 and 32 and 36, that's why Jesus said, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you what? Free. free. And then it says, if the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free. Yeah. And you know, it's very interesting because in the um, you know, that very, those passages right there, Jesus was talking to the religious leaders of Pharisees, and they believed that they were not in any bondage, and Jesus was trying to show them that they were in complete bondage to the, to the uh, law. Mm -hmm. And Jesus
Jesus was trying to get them from the law to learn about grace. He was trying to get them to learn about love instead of rules and regulations. He was trying to get them to learn about mercy and grace, but that's not what they wanted to do. They kept wanting to, um, they kept wanting to put out the rules and regulations, and they wanted to make everybody live by those rules and regulations, and Jesus did not live by the rules and regulations. They thought he should live by it that time. And because of that, they tried to kill him. But the thing about Jesus is they couldn't kill him. He had to lay his life down. And so he laid his life down, and what happened to him? <clears throat> he went, he got all, the Bible says he rose with all authority, all power and authority, in his name, right? Yep. Yeah. And he rose, and who did he give that power and authority to? To us. To us. To us. Yes. And just like you're saying about this decision thing, once we make a decision, now we're ready to use that, that power. Mm -hmm. We're ready to use that power. That power is, is you know, we talk about the word blessed. The word blessed means that you are empowered to prosper. Mm -hmm. And God empowers his people. He doesn't empower you to fail. That's that's the, that's what a curse is. Amen. 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 He don't Amen. empower his people to fail. He always empowers his people to prosper. That's what God Amen. does. And even here, he took them out from under bondage, and he empowered them to prosper. When they left Egypt, they didn't leave Egypt empty-handed. Mm -hmm. They left Egypt. They had all the silver and gold. They had all the livestock. They had even people that weren't even Hebrew with them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, they, and they all came out of there, and you know they they, they were living they had to live by the law. Uh, later on, they end up living by the law. But before that, God grace was there with them the whole time, leading and guiding them. You know, it was their fault they got the law in Exodus 19. It was their own fault why they got the law. Mm -hmm. But um, hey, we just need to. Right, when I look at this, you know, it. it it's showing me that, you know what, the Lord has released us from a lot of stuff, and we shouldn't get caught back in it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We shouldn't get caught back in it, just like the scripture says. Uh, Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it with good things. Okay. Now, there's a scripture that says that, um, and I think it's Psalms 103, uh, maybe verse 5, maybe. And it says that he fills our mouths with good things so that our youth yes. is renewed yes. like the eagles. Amen. So, hey, come on. Our youth is renewed. Amen? Amen. 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 Anybody? Okay, you go. Um, <laughs> so, um, I like the fact that he, this part here, he says, open your mouth wide. And I will fill it with good things. I like that part. Because Amen. you can't get fed if you don't open your mouth. Mm -hmm. You can't receive anything if you don't open your hand and let go. It took a while for me to let go. I was holding. You know, like that poster that they show a cat hanging on. <laughs> And to dear life, hold on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how I was. Holding on. Holding on to stuff that I needed to let go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I make that choice to let go, <clears throat> it was hard. I, I remember when Pastor told me uh, that, you know, when I first came here and I started, I said, don't you hurt me. Yeah, or thank you, don't. Uh -huh. don't you hurt me? Don't you hurt me? Because mm -hmm. I've been hurt. I said, okay. mm -hmm. Not church hurt, but hurt hurt. Yeah. Hurt hurt. Where I I felt like I give you everything mm -hmm. and then you beat me up. Yeah. That's how bad it was. Mm -hmm. I gave you love and yet mm -hmm. you stabbed me in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I gave you this but yet you did that and you know and when my ex-husband at that time what he did really hurt me that's why it's hard it was hard 
There you go. It was hard there you go. to open myself to people mm -hmm. because I was afraid that they might hurt me. And, uh, you know, yesterday we had like a parent meeting and we were talking about, you know, how you raise your kids and, and how sometimes your behavior that you act, you're, you're teaching your children that behavior. Mm -hmm. So I was always angry. I was always angry. I was always frustrated, mm -hmm. upset. And what happened was I was passing it on to my son. Yep. Not knowing what I was doing. When I started working at the Head Start and I started understanding how to work around my feelings mm -hmm. and how to control my feelings, then I started teaching my son how to work around with his feelings. And, and I thank God that he put me in that position because I didn't put myself in there. I know he put me there. He put me there for a reason. Amen. And when he put me there for a reason, I was like, God, really? Really, God? We're working with kids? I didn't think I was going to do this, God. Uh, this is not my forte, God. God it really tripping. isn't. God, you tripping. I, I'll never forget. Yes. <laughs> really tripping, Lord. Tripping like ain't no tomorrow. Because I said to God one time, I was young. I was really young. I was in my 20s. And I told my mom, I'm not going to bring no kids into this world. What for? I ain't bringing no kid into this world. What for? The, the, the world's going to just chew them up and throw them out. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. But then when I wanted that kid, and I really wanted my child, I wasn't able to have one because of what I told myself, mm -hmm. what I did to myself. When I came you. here, I learned more. Because when I was pregnant of Angel, at five months, I almost lost him. And then I said, I went to church, Catholic church, you know, because that's where I went. Catholic Church, okay? <laughs> um, and um, I had said, I just, and like I said, I didn't really know who God was. Because I'm going to be honest, I didn't know. I said to him, you know, God, I want this one. Forgive me for what I said, mm -hmm. but I want this one. <laughs> but did I know what I was doing? <laughs> no. I didn't know. Because I didn't think he would listen to me God, or hear me. God, but you asked a question. If you, why would you ask questions if you didn't think he was going to hear you? I know, but I didn't know. I just said, God, I want this one. That's all I said. I'm sorry for what I said, but I didn't know, really. And I'm going to be honest. I didn't, like I said, I went to church, check the box. Mm -hmm. Check the box. I just, there was no such things as deacons. Elders, ministers, there was no, no nothing like that. No fivefold ministry. No. You just had the father, you just rabbi. Had you just had the father, and, the, and that was it. Nobody else. And you really, you really couldn't go and tell them anything, honestly. You had to go into a confession box and say, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned. It's been so many. You see how I still remember? I have that in my head. It's been so many years since I haven't confessed. And, blah, 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 blah. and all that he would say was, 13 okay, Hail yeah, 13 Hail Marys and <laughs> our fathers, and, and, and you'll be good. Not really explaining to me, like, what you say is very powerful. <clears throat> you know, the tongue is powerful. Yes, it is. So, did you want to say something? Yeah, I'm gonna let Quinn go first. Though. Okay, Quinn. You know, this is really good, you know, um, to make a choice. And you know, back then, in your spiritual walk, your, your growth was right here. So now that you're in a learning status and applying it to your life, you understand it more. You know, sometimes we say things that we really don't understand at that time, and we say we don't get it, it's because we didn't know. But now that we have that knowledge, and we have applied it to our life, oh, oh okay, you know, I get it now. You know, God, like you said, God 
He put us in places where we, we don't want to be, but God knows. For well, he knows the plan, which is Jeremiah 29, 11. God knows the plan. You know, sometimes we put ourselves in places where we think we are supposed to be, where we, where we think that's the, pl that's the spot for us. And I remember one time, I wanted this job so bad. I knew it was coming my name. I bugged the people until they say, Miss Carter, is you again? Yes, it is. But when I got there, I'm like, Lord, I must have lost my mind. <laughs> and I called my husband for a lunch date, and I said, babe, do I really have to stay here <laughs> and this job? Because I don't really think it's for me. I put myself here. And, and that's us. We put ourselves in situations, you know. And he said no. And he hung up. I, said, I called him back. I said, I just need some confirmation, okay? I just want to make sure. <laughs> make sure. But then, you know what? Later on that night, I had got a call that my grandmother had passed. And we know that start a new job, you can't just talk, take off right there and then. And so, fast forward up to your study of making a choice. You made a choice to have a personal relationship with God. You made a choice to apply it not only to your life, but also to your son's life. And coming here made a different inner growth because you wouldn't be up there right now. You know, we all say that what well, we ain't gonna do, but God has another plan for us. Don't be always. Go ahead. And then pastor. Hey man, this is really good. You know, earlier he was talking about um, you know, the choice that we make to hold on to God or to let you know, you hear people say it all the time, let go and let God. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you don't have a relationship with him, you don't know how to let go and let God. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, when they hear let go and let God, they let go of God and hold on to the things that they shouldn't hold on to. But they're praying that God would help them. You know, but you just let him go. You let the wrong person go. When you're going through things, you're supposed to cleave to God. My God. Get closer to him. Get somewhere where you can hear more of his word. Get somewhere where you can learn more of his word so that your relationship can be built stronger and for you to get a better understanding in order how to use this word in those trying times. You know, but it's all a choice. It's a choice for you to go and get the word or sit and stay where you are. It's up to you. God is not going to make you. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor <coughs> You know, uh, when uh, Jesus had some friends, and his friends, uh, one was named Lazarus. He had a couple of sisters, Martha and Mary. Mm -hmm. And Martha was always so busy. You know, when Jesus and them came through, Martha was so busy. She was in the kitchen trying to get everything together because they had company. And she looked at Jesus. Jesus, <laughs> tell her. Mary, tell her to come in here and help me so we can get things done out there for you guys. And Jesus said, um, Martha, Martha. <laughs> um, you know, when Jesus said it twice, yeah. now he's trying to get your attention. Yeah. Yeah. Martha, Martha. <laughs> Look, you see, you are so busy doing all this stuff. But he said, she, Mary, has chosen the right thing. And what she chose to do was a sin at the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. What she chose to do is what Matthew 6, 33 said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. See, we can do like Martha. We can try and make things happen. Mm -hmm. Or we can be like Mary and just let things be added to us. Amen. 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 That's really good. Um, <laughs> that's really, really, really good. Martha. I know what you're That's really about. good. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> that's really good, Pastor. <laughs> that's really good. Um, last week, 
make a choice. Make a choice. Last week we had our our yearly reviews at work, right? And y'all know, for me, I was cool. Like, I know my review is good. I'm a good worker. They tell me I'm not. So I really don't care what the paper say. I know I'm a good worker, right? And I know people think like, ooh, it's annual review, you get nervous. I'm not nervous. They don't know me. I'm just a good worker, so put what you want on that paper. If it ain't good, we gonna have a conversation right now. <laughs> but I'm not worried about it. So, so as I'm getting dressed that morning, because the manager had to come down from Houston because they want a wet signature, that's mm -hmm. cool. I'm getting dressed and I'm having a conversation with God that goes something like, Things will remain the same. I'm prepared for that. Because if they were going to change, they would have changed already, God. We're okay with that. So long as he don't say something <coughs> dumb, like you can't pray with the people anymore. You can't give word to the people anymore. You can't, you know, can't do anything like ministry no more. As long as he don't say something like that, we cool. But all that other word stuff, no, we fine. Just as long as none of those things change. We're fine. So I let everybody else go. It's only three of us. So I let them go. Now it's my turn. So he sits down with the paper and he has this really weird look on his face. And he's going through and he's like, Jay, you know, Jay, he's like, I said, Jay, I, you know, I, I, just, I think the world of you, you're really great. And I'm like, oh, we're going to a great start. Blah blah blah. Yeah. But as he's talking, I'm like, is there like a blood coming? Like, because <laughs> it's just really weird. And I've already got my pen, like I'm ready to sign it, you know, because yeah, I'm great. You know, he's talking, I'm reading, we got fives across the board. Okay, okay, well. But this look on his face, and it's like, so he pauses, and I was like, is there a butt coming, sir? Because he's like, oh no, there's no butt. I was like, oh, we'll get to it. Like, where are we going? <laughs> Ah, ah. Like, I was like, I'm not gonna get. I said, I don't get in trouble for praying. I don't get in trouble for none of those things I do at court, right? Like give them word and all that good stuff, right? He was like, No. I said, Okay, great. You want me to sign right here? Right here. Good. Right? He said, Yeah. He was like, You know, no promotion is happening this year. I was like, I said, I know that Lone Star is not going to give me a promotion because all promotions come from God, and that's fine. Come on now. It's okay. Amen. I'm not worried about y'all. God is my provider. Amen. The word Amen. tells me that I will reap if I faint not, and I won't faint. It won't keep me from doing the job that I do. It will not keep me from praying with the people. It won't keep me from still spreading the word. Amen. It will not keep me from doing everything that I do when I come here Monday through Friday. So as long as everything is still the same, I'm okay. Like, where are we going to eat again? Because I looked up this Korean barbecue place. It's right down the street on Main Street. Y'all ready to go? And he was like, I told you I loved you, right? I was like, we're not going to get in trouble for you saying that, right? I mean, I'm just saying. It's not recorded or nothing. But making a choice. Anybody else would have acted a fool. Because they're not going to get promotion. They don't get the raise they think they're supposed to get. But I know that God is my provider. Amen. Amen. This job, yes, it's good to have. But God keeps me. Amen. I love what I do. I love how they allow me to do all the other things for them. But I love what he allows me to do for him Amen. when I show up on their salary. Amen? Come on now. Do you want to see some Bible? Yeah, because okay. uh, what I've learned is uh, during this uh, during, in, through this walk, I've learned that... Uh, we have been strategically placed. Yes. It's an assignment yes. Yes. for us to be where we are. We we think it's a job, but it's not. It's an assignment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're there for a reason. We're there to bring the light. We're there mm -hmm. to, to be that lighthouse out there, you know, where, where the ships are trying to get, you know, navigate the, yeah. the dark. Mm -hmm. They're trying to navigate out there in the sea. <laughs> but they, they need that lighthouse so they can be guided. Yeah. And God puts us in places and, uh, you know, he uses that light that he has put in us, you know, we're the light of the world. He uses that light to, uh, to, to get rid of darkness. Mm -hmm. He uses that light to uh, show people loving kindness, mm -hmm. to show people grace, mercy, love. 
He used that. He puts us in these places. So when I go to the gym, I mean, they all call me, now they call me, you know, they all call me gym dad, gym father. Gym father, gym father. <laughs> they call me. And that's like, okay. And, you know, I wear it proud. I like that. You know what I mean? Gym father. Because they, they, some days I can get a good workout and get it in quick. But most days, my wife would tell you, man, he's been at the gym so long. You know why? Because I'm up there preaching and, uh-huh. and, and teaching and uh-huh. helping and, and counseling folks. And, you know, because, and then they get finished. I remember one person told me, you, you know what, sir, you should be, uh, uh, what did she call it? No, no, not a therapist. She, and, uh, uh, this is a speaker. It's the, uh, she said, sir, you should be a motivator, mo- motivational speaker. Mm-hmm. I said, well, I kind of am. <laughs> and so you know I, God knows exactly we all have assignments yeah. you know yeah. we all have assignments we are being taught the word of God Amen. right here being taught the word of God and then we all we're sent out on our assignments that's what Jesus did when he sent out the seven you know he sent them out assignments you know, they all came back excited because everything was going mm-hmm. on. In the same way, we come back, we're excited because we're like, you know what, well, Lord, thank you for opening the door, yeah. allowing me to, to share your word with somebody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It's, uh, it's awesome when we're talking about making a choice because especially when it comes to leadership within the body of Christ, mm-hmm. there was a point where a choice had to be made to where of answering the call. And then there were some that um, <laughs> made their own call. You know, they just went. <laughs> and stuff. And they, yeah, they, 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 yeah. they called just themselves. Went. They, they just called went. themselves and said that God called them and they didn't. And so that's how you have a lot of these ministries where the one key part that we talk about here all the time of the fivefold ministry is missing. There's no teaching going forth, there's no teaching. They didn't make the choice to study, to show thyself approved. Workmen need not be ashamed where you can rightly divide the word of truth. And so, therefore, they're going off of studies and messages that have been passed down, or they're giving their ministries based off of a cliche, or it's based off of somebody's opinion or somebody's feelings versus the truth. And that's why you have religion versus the relationship. The relationship is the truth. Religion is man-made and that's under the law mm-hmm. because when you call yourself a Christian that's not a denomination mm-hmm. it's not Baptist it's not Kojic it's not Pentecostal it's not Catholic it's none of that Christian means Christ like mm-hmm. Christ like it's not a denomination and that's where people get it twisted because there's no teaching going forward and that's what I love about this ministry is that our pastors allow God to work in them to where they can study to show that self proof to where he is a great teacher. He made the choice to accept the teaching that was given to him to give it to the sheep. To where we can be taught to be ready in season and out of season. To, uh, that the gospel means the good news. Yes. And that there is a difference between religion and a relationship. And that you can know when you are being put under the law and when you're given grace, which is freedom, to when you you know all the differences between things, to where you have the discernment that people mm-hmm. always want to talk about the discernment, the discernment, but they can't discern that they're being lied to because they haven't been told the truth. Mm-hmm. They still have the scales over their eyes. They haven't been taught the truth. So... All they know is that. <clears throat> and so like when you was talking about when you was under that, that's all that you knew. You're held accountable for what you know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that was what you knew. And, it, and the crazy thing about all of us can tell about when God was using us and we didn't know that God was using us. BC, before Christ, before we signed that blood contract and got saved. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and we had a source where we, we didn't realize that we were being used by him, but we gave it to something else or someone else but it was all glory to him yeah and and now that we know the truth now we know where it really goes that it was him that saved our lives it was him that went before us and gave us what to say at the very hour it was him that led and guided us it was him that uh saved us it was him that changed our minds 
and brought us back because there was more for us to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 That's that's good. I, I, I'm gonna piggyback off the of Sean though. You know, he said that God chose us, right? And when he chose me, I said, uh uh. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing that. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Don't, time. Hey, don't ask people to raise their hands who said that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, mm -mm, mm -mm. I was like, no, 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 no. I remember children's ministry. You should be working back there because you know, I say, you crazy? Monday through Friday, I work with these kids. You think I'm going to work with Sunday? And they go back Monday and work with the other ones? You crazy. But you know, the funny thing was that God was talking to me. Yeah. He was mm -hmm. talking to me. And I was listening. ignoring him. <laughs> I sure was not listening to him at all. He told me to go to And you. then Pastor came, what you waiting for? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> this is the first thing that came out of my mouth. What you talking about? Like that. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then I said to Miss Wilson, Miss Wilson, what are you talking about? I don't understand nothing he said. Oh, yeah, I really didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't. And Miss Wilson was, you know, she was over here telling me stuff. And I said, Miss Wilson, I don't know what you're talking about either. I kid you not. I don't understand that concept. Mm -mm, that's not happening over here. But look where I'm at. Everything that I said I didn't want to do, you doing. I'm doing. Uh -huh. mm. I do children's ministry. I teach the kids on Monday through Friday anyway. Mm -hmm. I come here, I do what I got to do in the church, I put my music on, and I enjoy the peace and quiet that I have in this place. Because every time I put, and I see you, Sean, every time I put music on from Spotify, it never fails. I always cry. And I'm clean in the church. Because I know how good he is. So, Go ahead, Sean, because I'm going to go to my next uh, scripture. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's all about the uh, <laughs> moving our butts out the way. Because right. mm -hmm. you know yeah. we have all these excuses, but but this, but that, but we have to move our butts out the way <laughs> and go with yeah. what God says. Yeah. We have to go with what God says, and, and then we realize that it's no more excuses, and, and then we, we don't want to need to give any excuses because then we realize that we can do what he says. He said, take my yoke for it is easy. Mm -hmm. Then you realize that being a child of God is easy. That doing what he said is easy. But we were making it seem as though it was a burden. That it was, oh, I, I got to give up this. I can't do this. I, got, I have to go and do this. I have to be willing to do this and, and, and all that. But if we move those butts out the way, allow the scales to fall off and get in a real relationship then we learn to realize that hey because I didn't I, it was in this in this ministry that I realized and, it, and Pastor had, had gave it in one of his messages I think his message of Sunday school where he was saying that no is an anointed word yes. mm -hmm. I remember that and, and I was yeah. like I said you know what you that. sure are right was a Bible study. because not saying no gets a lot of people in trouble, especially within the body of Christ. Ooh, I'll trade, man. It gets people uh, uh, in a lot of trouble and stuff to where you got to learn how to hate. No is an anointing where you got to learn how to say no. Mm -hmm. Amen. Even within the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about this this ministry and the shepherd that he gave us. He will not allow us to overtask mm -hmm. ourselves. And he won't overtask us as well. Because then you get burnt out. And the first thing you want to do is what Elder Carr said, let God go. Yeah. You want to let go and let God, but you let God go so you can get in the place and then you go do you yeah. instead of letting go and letting God. Yeah. Go ahead, Pastor. Yeah, I like the way he said that about the yoke because, uh, you know, it, it, the King James used that word, mm -hmm. yoke. Uh, but what it's speaking about is, again, it's talking about law because that's what it was. Law was a yoke. And it, it, it was it was heavy because it was a lot of rules and regulations that you had to live by. Now, the truth of the matter is, um, the law was never given to Christians. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The law was only given to uh, 
the Hebrew children. Mm -hmm. You know, and then later on they were called Jews, mm -hmm. and so now everybody calls it uh, Judaism. And so the law was never given to uh, us, the Gentiles. Gentiles. We were Gentiles. Right. But where do we learn how to follow the law? In church. Yeah. And where should it have been that we should have never learned about following it in church? Yeah. We should have been, we never should have been taught to follow that law because now it has the entire body of Christ all divided. You know, people are just like what was it in uh, Louisiana, I think they tried to reinstate the Ten Commandments yes, yes. being put in all, all the schools and everything, and they shot it down. You know, and the truth of the matter is, I agree with them shooting it down because the Ten Commandments was not given to it wasn't given to us. Mm -hmm. It was given to people who were under a law because of their arrogance. It was never given to us Gentiles. What was given to us was grace. Amen. 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 And you have to make a choice. You either go follow Jesus or Moses. You either go follow the law or grace. But you have to make a choice. The Lord showed me something the other day. And uh, what he showed me was... Um, Remember the scripture when um, Elijah, Moses, Elijah, and uh, Jesus was, uh, they were all, you know, it was Jesus and the disciples, they were going on a walk somewhere, right? But then Jesus stopped, and there was an area where they called of transfiguration, right? And at that point, all Peter, all of them bowed down and everything, because they saw uh, three people, they saw this light, and it was three people, Moses, um, Elijah and Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And so he asked, Peter asked if he should build a temple for all three. Mm -hmm. So we build, we should build a temple for everybody, for all three. And that's when he heard the Lord said <laughs> to follow my son, follow him. That's what it said. Follow him. The reason it said that was because Moses represented the law. Yeah. Elijah represented the prophets. Mm -hmm. When everything was over, guess who was still there? Jesus. Jesus. Grace. Grace was the only thing that was there. Love was the only thing that would last. Mm -hmm. See, the other things, they fade away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they never were supposed to be given to us. However, they were good. Somehow they seep, and it's because of ignorance, it seeped into the churches, and then we started teaching this law, telling everybody, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, not knowing that every time they tell you not to do something, that's exactly what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and, and it's pure ignorance, because people are still doing it today, and they say, oh yeah, well, you know, you don't need to be out there doing this. And people are in sin doing this. And the very person is saying people are in sin, that person is in more sin than everybody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's always because the, every time they say, thou shalt not. See, I'm, I'm thankful. Because my God Amen. has forgiven my sins yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. The scripture tells me that sin isn't even being charged to my account anymore. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a sinner. I I have been saved by grace. Amen. 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 Who I made mistakes? Who I mess up? Do I have bad habits? Yes. <laughs> but you know what? Sin is no longer being charged in my account because Jesus took that at the cross. Amen. So I didn't have to take it no more. Amen. Can't be double jeopardy. Amen. 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 You know. You did an excellent job of ushering me in, John, the Baptist. Yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, because the way you just went with that is where I'm going with religion is it, at its all-time high right now. Mm -hmm. Religion is. But the love of God, his grace has never lost its strength. Mm -hmm. But people don't know that because they're hearing religion speak through the world. They're hearing, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. You're a sinner, you're a sinner. You can't do this, you can't do that. And they, they're they hearing that so loud that they can't hear the still voice of God mm -hmm. saying, come to me. 
I love you. Come to me, you're free. Amen. Come to me, your sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. They're not hearing that because they're they're focused on the loud voices of religion. Mm -hmm. All of the hooping and hollering and the hacking and hooking. Oh, the show. The show. As Elder Lot gave a, 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 a message once before, stop the show. Mm -hmm. I'll wait on Thank You Fresh to come out. I know, right? But the, the blessed thing about this is, here it is. We have a choice to make. Mm -hmm. To follow that voice of God or to follow the loud mouth religion. I'm following God mm -hmm. because there's love with God. Amen. There's freedom and peace and joy with God. Goodness, amen. We're talking about the kingdom. Come on now. Mm -hmm. All those things is what you get when you're with God. Goodness. Look at what we have here. Joy, hey, we may look like we're small in numbers, but our love, yes. our love Always. just outweighs everything about the world. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, you know, this is really good because everybody's, like I said, I learn from everyone else. Amen. We learn from but, you know, like that um, Psalms 81 and 10, you know, open your mouth. Come on now. And he will fill it. Come on so, now. With good things. I decided to open my mouth. So I went to Psalms 138, 1 through 8. NLT. Psalms 38. Psalms 138. 138. 138. 138. 138. Amen. Amen. Everybody there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Almost. Pass it out. Pass it. Hold up. Wait a minute. That's okay. All right. All right. Go for it. Okay. So it says, I give you thanks, O Lord, with all my heart. I will sing your praises before God. That's, you see, it's a little G. Okay? Amen. Those are the fake people that make you do the rosaries <laughs> and stuff like that. Fake people. <laughs> They're the people that will tell you, you need to say, Hail Mary and our fathers. When that doesn't really. But that's, that's religion. That's religion. Mm -hmm. You never okay. find none of that in the Bible. No. And it says, I bow, I bow before you, holy temple, as I worship. I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness. Mm -hmm. For you promise, your, for your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. Amen. So, you know, I, I was reading this yesterday and then I started thinking, my goodness, wow. wow. Mm -hmm. How great is that name? Yes. How wonderful is he? How amazing is he? And then I'll go to three. It says, as soon as I pray, you answer me. Can you, can, you know, you be calling somebody? Okay. And, and you leave a message and they don't call you till two days later. And you needed them at that point in time. Not God. He answers right away. And then, you know, it says, oh, you, en off. you encourage me by giving me strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about that. I think about that strength. Because I remember when I was married, the person that I had didn't give me strength. What he did was pull me down. Mm -hmm. He just pulled me down with him. Mm -hmm. And then I said to him one day, I want a divorce. He said, don't, don't wear something you don't, you don't do. I said, I want a divorce. Did you hear me? Did you hear me stop? Did you hear me uh, hesitate? I want a divorce. And then I said, because this is why I said to him, because I fail, and this is how I felt with him. I said, I was up here, and you brought me down here. I said, I should, you should not bring me down from up here. I shouldn't be down there. You should be coming up with me. You should be coming up with me. So that way we won together. I remember when, when we first got together and we got married and, oh, 100, 100. 100, 100. 100 you? I mean, not even 100. 50 you, 50 me. 50 you, 50 me. 100. 
hundred. Fifty you, fifty me. And then I came to this church. And and pastor gave a word. No, it's not fifty fifty. It's a hundred him, a hundred you. And then I said to myself, Oh my goodness, that's interesting. That's very interesting. So, you know, I'm glad that I dragged Angel to church <laughs> when we had Bible study, Sunday schools, um, especially when we had those special trainings, like uh, relationships and things like that. I'm glad I dragged him because, I think he dragged, dragged you. yes, he did. He sure did. He brought me here. But the funny thing was that when, when he, one time I went over there for for Christmas or a spring break or something like that and we went somewhere and he started talking about that video with that guy that was talking about you know your wife wants you to cure this and you know men have a box and they take whatever they have in that box and they take it out and then they put it back into the box women aren't like that women go and they tell you oh do you remember this oh do you remember that oh do you remember this but you, you know, you let that go, but she hasn't let that go yet. So they need security and blah, blah, blah. And he, well, I was looking at him when he was talking about that stuff. And I started laughing because I said, hey, you remember that? Angel was only like 10 years old when they had that video. He was very young. But the thing that I love the most about this church it's not the church. It's the people in the church. It's the people in the church. It's not the floor walls. It's the people. That he got an understanding. Not just from me, but from Pastor Troy, all the first lady, the first lady, all the women in here, Deacon Duncan, especially Deacon Duncan, Deacon, Deacon Brown, and Sean, where he got an understanding. You know, and I appreciate it that he really understands. And I praise God for that. I thank God. God. Glory. God be glory. Go ahead, Sean, because I thought they finished, okay? Amen. It, it goes back to making a choice. You made a choice to do what the scripture said. To raise your child up in the way of the Lord so when he gets older, he will not depart. Yeah. And so that was because you made that choice. As you said, to uh make him suffer from that drug problem to where you drug him to church all the time when he needed to be here. And I thank God that my grandmother had that drug problem and that she drugged me to church every time the doors was open because it gave me a, a foundation, which was Jesus, when he's the cornerstone. And so, and so you, you made that choice to make Jesus the cornerstone in his life. And therefore, if he didn't have it in him, how could God bring it back to his remembrance? It had to be put in him first. Amen. 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 So here's uh, Psalms 138 and 4. Every king in all the earth will thank you, Lord, for all of them will hear your word. Remember, we need to spread this word. Amen. It's really Amen. important. It's important to explain Amen. to everybody, hey, you know, because I've, I've heard people tell me it's different. And, you know, like, I remember one time my mother was telling me, oh, it's a sin to be cremated. I was like, did you ask where it was? Uh, uh, I didn't know. So, okay, I, I was here, and we had, what, what was it, free fall? Free yeah, free fall. And you asked I asked my first question. So is it a sin to be cremated? Can you donate your organs? Is that a sin too? Uh, so what are we going to do about this? I need an answer. <laughs> so, you know, when I learned about this, and my mother, I said, I, I, I said, you know, mom, it's not in the Bible. No, it's it, nothing, nowhere in the Bible does it say. And I remember she used to say, God helps those who help themselves. Mommy, that's not in the Bible either. No, no. I asked pastor, first lady, I asked everybody in the church, that's not in the Bible. <laughs> and then I said to her, pa Pastor told me that was Benjamin Franklin. You know, the guy that invented electricity. 
So, you know, the, the thing that I love the most is that I learn. Even though sometimes I don't want to stand here and give this word. And I'm being honest. Especially on the screen. Especially on the tele. On, on, on Facebook and stuff like that, the, you know, me, me and this don't don't like each other. We don't. But but God, you know, I. And the funny thing is that when I need to take a picture of myself, I do one of these, and then I look at it and I say, oh, that's not good. No, that's not good either. I can see my double chin on that one. No, that's gone. That's gone. That's gone. But. It's funny because he's telling me that I'm wonderfully made. Fearfully, fearfully and wonderfully made. made. Yes. That no matter how I look at myself, I'm beautiful. Amen. I'm beautiful. Amen. And I'm funny too. Okay. I make people laugh. Go ahead, Jolanda. Make a choice. Amen. Yes, amen. After your last comment, right, and seeing ourselves how God sees us, we are the apple of his eye, the fruit of his eye. We are diamonds to him. And I remember years ago, I mean, Dove is when we were talking about how we look in the mirror, we see every um, horrible every thing, flaw, every, every flaw, flaw, right? But there's some woman who is saying, you know, I wish I had full lips like her. I wish I had thick thighs like her. I wish I had this. I wish I had that. And so... I make a choice to say, I'm beautiful. That's right. Amen. I'm beautiful and wonderful. Amen. Make the choice. Don't delete that picture because there's going to come a time when you may not even have the strength to take that picture. But in 2024, you have the strength to take it. Keep Amen. those pictures. Amen. 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 But, you know, like, you know, perfect. I'm, you working beautiful. On it. I'm still working. You work. I'm still working on it. You know, like, like, like. I always go to people and they and they tell me so. I say, God's still working. God's still working. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't, ain't finished yet. He ain't finished yet. Thirteen. He's working in you, giving you the power and the a power and the desire to do what pleases Him. And, and and it's funny because I look at myself in the mirror today. And I said, I brushed my hair back and I, I put a ponytail. And I said, You got this girl. <laughs> <laughs> you got this girl. You got this. You got this. You got this. And, and, you know, the funny part was I came early for praise and worship. And everybody understands me, everybody knows. I don't like doing this leader thing. <laughs> and I do it every day, Monday through Friday, working with all the staff that I work with. And I said to myself, Jolanda, you know I don't like this. You know I don't like this. Man. I kid you not, Jolanda. I was going to send her a text message to tell her, can she put you in charge? Denied. I kid you not. And then I said, make a choice. Then I said, okay, no problem. I got it. Just like that. Okay, no problem. I got it. And then I start telling myself at the job, man, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go up there. I don't want to have to do that. I don't to... It's just my mind just constantly telling me, you're not going to make a good thing. You're going to come in. And, and, and because my mind was like that, right. I had a hard time singing. Because I need to get out of my mind. That's what we're telling you. <laughs> and everybody was telling me that. I, you need to get out of your mind. Get out of your head. Right get out now. Of your head. Get out of your head. Right now. And then I said to myself, it's going to happen. Mm. I'm just going to have to study more, get the words down right, listen to the rhythm, and I'll get it. Mm. And stop stressing. Keep doing and stop doing. stressing. Right oh, I see my time is... Let me look at my watch. Oh, yeah. Great Ooh, praise and worship. It's only yes. one minute left. So, before I go to the... No, no I'm not going to anything else. I'm not going to anything else. But, I want to thank everybody that came out today and the people on, on online. You know, come out. 
come because it's different. When you're on the video, you can't talk, you can't ask questions, you can't enjoy the laughter that's happening happen over here. Because like I said, I make people laugh, okay? So you need to come out and join us. Wednesdays, 7.30 to 8.30, Sunday school, yeah, Sunday school, 9.45 till 10.45, and then we have service from 11 to 12, 12.30, 1 o'clock. I mean, and we still have fun. Even when, yeah. even in service, yeah, we, we have, have fun. fun. You know, that's how we roll. You know, uh, nothing is impossible here. With God, all things You know, possible. all things are possible with God. But you know that, you know, God loves us. We have, you know, the no judgment zone. Nope. Nope. So, you know, you don't have to come fancy, uh, fancy dressed and anything like that just nope. because you come to church. Whatever you have come, God meets you as you are. I wear sneakers, jeans, and a t-shirt. Okay? So now I wear shorts if I want to. Yeah, and I wear shorts when I when it's hot. So, you know. If the I mean if the sun therefore set you free, you shall be free indeed. Enjoy. Stay free.